I want to make sure that they are ready to go back to the real world. I wanted to talk to you today because we're nearing the end. And I hope, I hope you go as far as you want to go. Be the biggest loser, great. But no, the biggest game that you're going to be playing is your life back at home. Right. Because I've been here since the beginning, I have seen many people go back home and fail. Yeah, and I mean, I could see why. You know, it's you know, we've talked about it as contestants. It is scary because everything here is a controlled environment, mm -hmm. from the refrigerator to the exercise to, you know, the lack of distraction from the family. So not that it's easy here, but you're set up to succeed. And when you go home, you know, you're let out into the wild and you have to do it on your own. You're never gonna be perfect. None right. of us are ever gonna be perfect, right? Sure. But the fact that you are having to take care of a family and you have a child with type one diabetes that you're just like having to monitor his life. But this is something that like you're not doing for yourself. I wonder why. why? I guess I just felt sorry for myself. And, you know, instead of like. Why did you feel sorry for yourself? Because I just felt like, you know, why, you know, why me? Why our family? Why did Jack get type one? I mean, why did my dad get ALS? I mean, you know, my dad, all right, you know, he was older, but, you know, my son, what did he do wrong? I mean, he's 18 months old and he got type one. And it's like, he's going to have that forever. I mean, he can never, he can never shake that, no matter what he does. You also have a daughter that, like, if she doesn't change her ways, be in a position of having right. type 2 diabetes. Uh, that, not her fault. That's Jackie and Ari's fault. And that's what worries me about you, Steve. OK. I see guilt. Yeah. It's my fault. It's my fault that she is where she is right now. This has got to mean something. It's not about, it's not about the show. It's not about TV. It's about what you can do for your family. And it's going to be tough. I'm sure there's days you don't want to always work out. Yep. I mean, I love the transformation. Being able to run, do all this other stuff. But like, if I do not work out, if I don't use the things that I've learned here at the ranch, I'll be right back where I was at. I remember being like 120 pounds and saying, like, if I ever got close to 200 pounds, just shoot me now. And then 200 came and 200 went, and I just kept getting bigger and bigger. When I go back home, what am I most afraid of is, you know, thinking of myself as that person that was 348 pounds. So I'm nervous of meeting him again and, you know, going to the dark side, in, in other words. What I want you to know is you're going to go back to your life. All those obstacles that you left are all still going to be there. Yeah. When you left The Voice, you didn't know who you were. Mm hmm You lost your father. There was emotions all over the place. Yeah. So I want you to um, think about your dad for me. And I want to know what you would say to him right now. <sighs> as much as it took me 26 years to finally get to a point where I wasn't scared to figure out who I was, I'm glad that I finally did, and I can tell him that I finally found a place where as much as it's scary and as much as it's hard work, I'm finding out who I am. And I think above anything else, above the singing, above the weight, like, he would be most proud of that. <laughs> I think if your dad was here right now, he'd be looking at you, and he'd be saying, you know what? You're finally seeing what I've seen in you all along. Yeah. And it's a good day for your dad. And it's a really good day for you. Thank you. All right. <laughs>